Hello, everybody. For this special episode we've got for you was actually our very first live show we did on our second anniversary, March 11th. We had a wonderful guest who showed up, which was Rocking Horse, and we had a wonderful conversation with them. And this was our first, and so there's going to be some hanks, and past Lion was a little uh, nervous and stressed out having an audience there. And so with that said, I do want to thank everybody who did show up. It meant a lot to see all of you there. So thank you very, very much. And thank you for Novid as well. You were there, and we had a few things that may have went on in the background that you'll never see, but thank you anyway. It meant a lot. And with that said, I would also like to take this moment to give you a few of a few really exciting announcements for Metaverse Degen. One, we're actually commissioning a world to be the future home base in VRChat, which is going to lead into hopefully some live shows in the future, similar to this, but hopefully next time I can think and give rules ahead of time and set things up so it comes out a lot sm more smoothly than throwing you along under the bus with me. Ah, oops. <laughs> and so with that said, thank you all for watching this and sticking with us these last two years. I can't believe it's been two years. Hot damn. <laughs> 200 episodes in two years. Can't believe it. But hey, let's hope for a whole other year and more episodes to go. Please enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you everyone for, no, no, for no, joining no, us in the Metaverse DJ chance. anniversary event. It's very much appreciated. Um, Today we're turning two, and this is our first attempt at actually doing a live show of any sort. This is going to be a live recording. This will be posted to YouTube in about two weeks. So thank you for showing up. It's very much appreciated to see all of you. Um, I'm Lion with Metaverse DGen, and we're here with our guest. Hey, it's Rocking Horse. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. So what is it that... Initially, when you tried to talk with you originally, we end up starting to, you end up doing club work and you switch to something else. What is it you do now? Yeah, so I've, I've been in VR chat for about three years now. Um, when I first started, I started with the whole, um, I guess, drinking scene. And then that got into the party scene that got into the DJ scene. And then I went to like the dancing scene for a bit. And then I came back to DJ scene again. And now I'm going back to dancing again. So that's kind of what I'm doing is um, I'm actually focusing more on like content creation than I am like working for a club specifically. Um, I'll be like open to doing some stage dancing at some clubs that like aren't specifically just strip dancing. Um, but I'm trying to like work on encouraging performing arts in VR chat and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So. Hmm. So what brought you into VR chat originally? Originally, um, I had some friends that I had played like Gary's mod with back in the day. Um, <laughs> I, I owned like one of the top US servers for Trouble in Terrace Town. That was a lot of fun. Made some really good lifelong friends doing that. Um, ventured into like Dead by Daylight and then like CSGO, Rainbow Six, all these different games doing like competitive esports and stuff. Not uh, like a super pro level or anything, but like <laughs> enough to be cool about it. Have a jersey, you know, some sponsors. It was fun. Um, and then I kind of like some of my content creation friends were playing like VR chat and they're like, yo, you should check this out. Like, it's really fun. Even if you don't have a headset, just like get in desktop mode and come chill with us. And I'm like, I mean, what could go wrong, right? It's a free game. And then I got trapped into the, oh my God, I need a headset. I need face tracking. I need full body. I need all these, you know, <laughs> like the, the unfortunate, like, oh, it's a free game. It's, it's literally just a gateway drug. Um, <laughs> but here we are, right? Doing things that like, we just never thought was even going to be imaginable. I know, like when I was younger, I remember Google being created. <laughs> so like, we're, we're here now, right? We're, we've been mm. a bit from, from that point um the old msn days so i'm just really looking forward to figuring out um like how to make a good community on a social platform for like multiple different levels of performing arts like singing acting dancing um producing music djing uh even like improv or stand-up comedy just like performing in general um, hmm. even visual DJing, like VJing, um, my bad, not visual DJing, visual jockeying, VJing. What the fuck um, is visual like DJing? So, fuck, I might even fucking lost, and I'm the old fucking. It's the people that make the visuals behind the DJ. What are you going to do, beat the horse? What? 
Thanks for joining us, even though you're very Take late. Take the horse to the old town road. Yeah, it ain't my fault my mom calls me. What do you want from oh, me? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Good. I, it's I, always good to hear I from typed mom. and told her, you jackass. <laughs> Type, my mom's on the phone. <laughs> Sorry, Thank folks. Thank you for sending me enough, messages. I'm just late. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, no problem. He don't <laughs> read shit. Yeah, I'm the one with this but... Shoot me. Yeah, my yeah. Mind, yeah. Okay. No, we ain't shoot nobody. We don't. Sh we don't shoot people. Dude, I have like three doctor's appointments a week. Don't at me, please. <laughs> no. It's crazy. So be like, my mom need a band aid. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I scraped my elbow, mom. I need to go to the ER. <laughs> no, not, like that. <laughs> not like you. Okay, dad. Oh no. Yeah. Thanks. So initially, when you first well, start you entering entered VR chat, zip. what is it that pulled you into the community initially? <laughs> what got you into the music scene and performing arts? So um, when I was a kid, I did like dancing and singing, acting my whole life. Performing arts um, was really into it. Even did some like technical stuff, like working in um, you know theater tech, and uh, got into IT, and then started playing computer games and the whole thing was like why not play peter computer games and do performing arts like that would be really fun right and that was the dream my whole life and then it finally was able to be done in vr chat um what specifically got me hooked into like wanting to do that in real life though is uh just because like i really miss doing all that kind of stuff and recently my health problems have been like taking away the ability i used to have but like I'm still trying to push myself to go back to like how I used to be an even better, hopefully, um, with the help of my friends and support. And I mean, just having a really good mental health really helps physically as well. So just, just uh, trying to make a positive experience for everybody because you never know what someone else is going through. And I've always liked the family vibe. So I'm just going to make it as friendly as possible. Hmm. I got a question line. Shoot. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? What part of difficult do you have in the dancing part, like compared to the real life in VR? Do you have, you know, so, compared to here um, to there? With current technology, it is kind of hard to like specifically do the kind of dancing I'm doing. Uh, I'm VR Chat's first tap dancer. Um, which poses a lot of safety concerns when you have a VR headset on because you're dancing on two very slippery metal plates um, and trying to like stand on your toes or like do some huge move while you're in tap shoes. And it's like, how do you do that while you can't see what you're doing? And so that's kind of like why I'm trying to um, convert my build to like someone that has like a, something that has like a cross compatibility sorry cross uh what's it called cross reality x reality or mr you know like that kind of stuff um something that can help me at least see because i know there's the whole screen tearing thing but it would be easier to be able to see my feet when i'm doing this kind of thing because it is very dangerous to do and i do not recommend attempting what i'm attempting it's just because i had done it for like 15 years i feel like i would probably be the best person to pioneer this so hopefully uh it works out the way i think it will it's been pretty exciting so far. I've been streaming on Twitch, um, getting back into that. So it's been a lot of fun so far. I've had a lot of good support and like, oh my God, you can tap dance. That's so cool. Um, because not a lot of people do know I am an ambulatory wheelchair user. Um, it is something I deal with uh, a lot of pain doing, but it is something that I really enjoy doing. So the mental health kind of helps the physical health in a sense when it comes to stuff like um you know chronic illnesses and disabilities uh mental health is the priority over physical health both are obviously important but um just making sure that you mentally stay strong because it is very hard to to handle hmm. so what pulled you into tap dance since you're an ambul ambulatory wheelchair user and how long have you been doing that for yeah I've actually never danced as an ambulatory wheelchair user, so that will also be something I'm trying to learn how to incorporate. I do have a, a lot of really good uh, dancers that are wheelchair users because I do live in Southern California. Um, there's a team called the Rolettes LA that are ambulatory wheelchair users or just regular even wheelchair users that have no uh, capability of standing or anything. 
Um, they're very expressive in like their arm movements and their facial gestures and like just their positive energy that they have going on. Um, there's even a girl that recently got on So You Think You Can Dance, one of the biggest dance competition TV shows there is. Um, and she's kind of trying to pioneer the way for ambulatory, ambulatory wheelchair users as well as just like disability rights in general. So I'm super excited for that. Mm. And I'm hoping with my content creation and everything and showing people how I would tap dance with a wheelchair because it is kind of like... I don't always need it, but I would like to incorporate into my dance sometimes just to kind of represent who I am and be more comfortable and do more mm-hmm. advanced moves and stuff. So I'm um, looking forward to figuring all of that out. And if, if you want to watch me learn it in the process, like I'm the first one doing it. So I got to figure all this by myself. And I would love as much support positivity as, as possible because it's going to help me figure this out faster and give you guys better content too. So mm. So have you ever had, uh, how long have you been doing tap dance for prior to the wheelchair use? So I started tap dancing in kindergarten, um, as well as ballet. And then around like my middle school years, I started doing like um, hip hop and jazz as well. Some lyrical, modern. Um, in high school, I started doing like hula and Tahitian and like line dancing, square dancing. I mean, I've been doing that kind of just on the side with my parents my whole life, but just kind of really getting into it, going to some bars and dancing and stuff. Um, And then like around right out of high school was when I started really having um, like a disability level of health problems. I've always had health problems. It's just a matter of time of like, it starts to kind of get worse once you end puberty and then your body's adjusting and all this stuff because your whole life you were told it's just growing pains and you know every kid does experience growing pains but not to the level where it's like concerning or you know like prolongs into your young adulthood and you don't have any support because your whole life you were you were told pain was normal you know so um it's just a really difficult path to to take but i'm just trying to do it and i honestly love doing content creation because i can have people around me that support me for what i'm doing Hmm. Okay. So what pulled you into uh, content creation? What made you want to do tap dance for content here in VR chat? I like being a first of some kind. I, I always have a lot of fun trying to figure out and like be unique. Um, Cause I feel like with some, one with invisible disabilities. Cause like even in game, I look fine right now. Right. Um, standing and, you know, talking normal. Um, but even in real life, people don't, you know, assume that I'm disabled or anything. And I've even had Karens walk up in front of me while I'm using an electric cart at Walmart before and tell me to get off the cart and stuff like that. And just some really rude stuff. Um, so I'm just trying to like spread as much awareness as to what people can do to like help. Um, and what, like, what's appropriate to ask. Like, if you see someone struggling, be like, hey, do you need any help? Or can I be of any assistance? Versus, like, can I push your wheelchair for you? Because, like, that might feel make someone feel uncomfortable. And it's just not something that somebody without a disability would think of. Mm. So it just needs to, like, you know, be raised awareness. And it's not that, like, abled body people aren't helping enough. It's just that they don't know what to do. So, so that's, I'm trying to make like a positive experience for people and also raise awareness to the government as to how they could help people with disabilities better. Mm. So and being is, the first of that kind kind of like helps you pioneer like your, your project that you're trying to go for, you know, like the more, you know, like, wow, you're trending. Like, I want to be trending. And then like, once I get that spotlight, be like, hey guys, like we should really focus on this because that's like really important. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like using the positive vibes and family that I've got from, you know, doing what I'm doing to start like helping other people too. Mm. So what is there, what kinds of things can people do to help people with disabilities such as yourself? Funny you ask, we actually kind of have this thing going on in VR chat right now called March Madness where the entire month of March, uh, we're doing a chair of charity events every single weekend. And some even on weekdays, you'd have to um, get the calendar from some of the clubs to um, know what the schedule's like. But um, every single club signs up for like a kind of a collaborative event or even like individual just kind of you know, raising for the same cause. Um, about three clubs participate in each day that is, and they all have different DJs and they do whatever rules they want for the lineup. So it's kind of just like a um, do it for the cause kind of thing. The clubs are doing their own thing and 
Um, this month, we're, we're fundraising for um, Dysautonomia International, which is a heart condition that I know a lot of us in VR chat do have, where we pass out and stuff, and people don't know really how to help. And um, there's like people with neurological conditions that are affected by this heart condition too, like myself. Um, so we're just trying to raise uh, awareness advocacy money for like the government and helping with uh, researching and stuff like that, as well as American Cancer Society, which obviously is a, a big one. It affects a lot of us and not just, you know, directly, but also our families and, you know, friends. And it's a lot more uh, common and personal and it definitely does help out a lot more people. But I also do want to like kind of focus more on like rare uh, disease awareness, which is kind of where we're going to try and go from there with um, working on that project with Papa Perk. He's an amazing person to work with. Hmm. I actually had no idea that VR chat groups such as clubs and stuff actually run charities. Well, I've, I've seen sometimes before, but not at large scales. How how common is that kind of thing here in VR chat? Um, there's actually quite a few um charity events that do run in VR chat. I know uh, a good example of one is Mend Your Mind. Um, they do a really good uh, mental health uh, awareness fundraiser, and I'd like to work with them hopefully in the future about like co collaborating with that event and making it, you know, like a larger scale and offering more help. Um, mm -hmm. And then the rest of the year, we would just do different types of awareness months. And, you know, the more people that do it and the more we're able to like, uh, you know, fund being able to run these kind of things, the more, um, you know, like we would be able to run more uh, frequent events, like even one every month or something. Um, right now, we're kind of thinking about two months from now is when we're going to be doing the next one. We're not too sure which charities we're going to use yet, but it'll be for the awareness month for the month we're going to be doing it and every time we do it. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question that's going to pull you back into your origins of dance. So what was it like in the beginning when you were starting to learn tap dance at such a young age? And what makes you want to pull it into VR? Oh boy! <laughs> so I do, I do struggle with memory issues, but tap dancing is one of the things that I remember the most. Um, I actually had a tap dancing teacher here in Southern California that worked directly with um, the Rockettes, which is the uh, Broadway tap dancing team that. that um, obviously it's in Broadway, <laughs> but there's like different types of tap dancing. There's Broadway tap. And then there's also rhythmic tap, which, uh, cares more about like, you know, like trendier, newer songs and beat matching with the tap shoes and stuff and doing fancy moves and whatnot. And, and Broadway is more of like a show, right? A performance kind of thing mm -hmm. where like, you're doing like, like can cans and kick lines and, you know, like, uh, kickball changes and, and, you know, stuff like that. Um, to where it's more showy than, than rhythmic. So, um, I'm actually kind of having to reteach myself, not only the basics of tapping, but then also, um, you know, moving forward into actually teaching myself rhythmic for the first time, because I used to only do Broadway um, since she was the instructor for that old dance team. So um, it's it's going to be interesting having to reteach my feet how to do everything, but I'm looking forward to it and I'm really excited because tap dancing is one of my biggest passions. Mm. So in terms of technicalities between the two, between rhythmic and uh, Broadway tap dance, what is or what are some of the differences between the two styles? Um, so yeah, like I was saying, Broadway is more of like a, a flowy kind of showy, um, kind of more like musical theater style, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, uh, dance moves that are incorporated into musical theater dance that come from Broadway tap. Um, whereas rhythmic is kind of more like, um, the traditional tap dancing style, in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. that derived from like, um, from, uh, Irish dancing. Uh, the the sh the toes in the Irish shoes are hardened. I don't remember exactly which by because I never did Irish dancing, but I know that they are harder than like ballet shoes, um, you know, like the soft ones. Um, and they do kind of click a little bit when you step because I think they have thicker soles as well. Um, so that's kind of where like it started incorporated into like the uh, the twenties is like the big you know like t tons of people were tap dancing in the twenties. Um, you know, like that's when it started to kind of become a thing into jazz. And then they have like the jazz tap shoe versus the Broadway tap shoe, which is like Broadway's more of like a, a more modern thing. Um, sorry, an older thing. <laughs> Rhythmic's more of a new thing. It just kind of, uh, 
it derived into a different kind of style, which it's like, you know, ballet versus lyrical versus modern. It's all these different like types of derivatives of something that started like from from Irish dancing. So it's it's really fun to get into the lore of all these different types of art forms and stuff. And I'm I'm kind of autistic about it, but you know, <laughs> it's uh it's it's really a passion of mine and I like uh helping other people know about, about some history from dance. Mm. So what's some of your favorite bits of tap dance history then that you personally like more than others? Oh man. Um well, I really do like the whole, whole like Rockette style of dancing where it's it's like an entire story. It's like a ballet, right? Where they they wrote this story and then made like a really elegant dance to it or vice versa and um you know, Broadway just kind of has that same feel where it's like, it's a complete story. Like the, the Rockettes do like a nutcracker every year for Christmas. And they have like this huge line of women just like falling onto it, like doing a trust fall in each other mm -hmm. on a line, doing like a domino effect. And that is like the biggest thing. in in at least my growing up in tap dancing, like my teacher always talked about that. And she actually taught us how to do it because she was the one that worked with them on trying to like, you know, figure out how to do it and keep up the consistency because they retreat it every single year no matter how long you've been in the Rockettes just like every single time it's a fresh you know like training for it because there's you know there's people changing out and the physics are different with different people falling in different speeds and stuff so it's it's a really a science it's it's interesting um if you ever do want to look up like a video on how they do the um it's called the nutcracker dance for the Rockettes super mm. super cool stuff mm. So how does through the Rockettes or any form of dance or tap dance, how does one tell a story through it? Um, I mean, they te they tell the entire story of the Nutcracker, just like the ballet, but in tap dance style instead. Um, that's why I like it a lot, because it's, it's very like, um, you know, like nostalgic, traditional feeling. Mm. Okay. I actually, I actually didn't never heard of the Rockette style of tap dance before, personally. That's why I asked. I didn't know how one would tell a story through dance. So I'm just asking you about that and for that reason. Sorry about that. I'm a little uncultured sometimes. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. I mean, there's there's stuff like, you know, like I said, in the 20s, tap dancing was really big. Um, some tap dance musicals that are based off of the, the origins of tap dancing, Thoroughly Modern Millie um, and 42nd Street, um, really like Broadway Review, all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm. Um, no business like show business this is a huge one for like Broadway dancing and I don't know if it's tap specifically but I did have a tap dance to 42nd Street and it was really cool it was it was very uh, showy and I don't know like obviously it's not nostalgic for me but um, it kind of is a little bit because my grandma was born in like 1922 so she did have some stories from back then and that's why like I feel so close to that time era is just because my grandmother was from there and she told me a lot of cool stories from when they came over to the US from you know Europe and stuff so mm. okay. it's a big part of who I am <laughs> oh so what are some of the difficulties or benefits of doing tap dance in VR chat Definitely how I kind of mentioned earlier where like the headset is a huge obstacle for me, uh, especially since I have like balance issues and like mobility issues being disabled. Like it is very hard for me or like if something's too painful and I misstep and then like I'm I'm kind of like, where do I put my foot? Because I can't see where I'm going if I slip or something, you know, it's uh, it's very hard. But there's good applications to use like um, turn signals are really good one where you can kind of tell like if you're spinning or not <laughs> it kind of tells you how to untwist in a visual way and it's really nice um as well as like kind of i have like the my floor guardian on not the wall because the wall kind of freaks me out a little bit because my play space is so small um <laughs> but yeah I, I just have the wall um the floor barrier on and use turn signal and i'm sure there's other things i could use too but that's what i've got so far as um i also have smooth tracking mm. that's that's all the kind of different things i use for dancing hmm. so what drew you back to doing dan uh, tap dance in a vr specifically other than being the first in something just honestly the the want to relearn how to do it and just lacking motivation because of like the pain and the mental health and stuff like hmm. i really wanted to get back into a healthier lifestyle but it's just like 
going to PT and like working out by yourself was just like, I've never really been good at like consi being consistent with that because I deal a lot with my mental health. And for mm -hmm. me, working out just kind of hurts it more because um, I'm in pain, you know, so like mm -hmm. obviously I'm going to have like a bit of a mental toll from that. And so I've always found it difficult to go to a gym or work out at home, do PT. Um, Dancing for me has always been a great way as well as sports. Like I did like basketball and softball and, you know, all these types of different dancing and stuff. So um, I definitely like stayed active that way when I was younger. And I want to get back to that because that was a good way to stay in shape. Mm. Well, honestly, I'm quite impressed, even though you you have your hurdles to get through, you're still doing getting into tap dance. So I do give you kudos for that personally. A lot of people can stare at those kind of issues dead in the face and they kind of go, eh, I'm done. But the fact you're doing it is impressive. So kudos to you. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not 100% at the point where I'm like, good. <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to the feeling of being like this. It is something that it's, it's hard to explain to people that aren't really going through it, but you're kind of mourning the life that you wish that you had. And I know there are mm -hmm. some people that aren't disabled that relate to that, where they had like these big dreams and aspirations and they just didn't end up working. And that's like so devastating because you can't really do anything about what you're going through. And just like learning to accept that and finding people that are like actually going to stick with you when you're really dealing with some, you know, tough shit. <laughs> um, cause I've had a lot of like, you know, fair weather friends or just doctors that didn't like believe in me. And then like that obviously took a huge mental toll cause I had to go back to square one if I had already, you know, waited a year just to see this doctor in the first place. And mm. it's just like this huge battle I've had since I was 18 and I've really gotten nowhere. Mm. Um, so it's just really about having a good like support system and, and finding, you know, your online family versus <laughs> worrying about who you've got in real life, you know, um, just finding people that generally support you. And honestly, people that picked to be with you are stronger bonds to me than blood. Mm. So on that note, in terms of VR chat, when you were first coming to VR chat, did you find it easy to find that kind of family or friend group here? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I actually, I actually struggle with my mental. Shut up, Dad. I, <laughs> I, I struggle with my mental health God a lot because um, I have like PTSD from my childhood and stuff, and anxiety and depression. And I actually have like kind of a side symptom of PTSD called um, selective mutism, which kind of has like a weird connotation in vr chat usually it just means people don't want to talk or use their microphone but there is an actual medical condition called selective mutism to where people physically cannot speak and the difference for me on that is like if someone were in direct danger like about to be ran over mm -hmm. by a bus i couldn't talk because i was so scared that like it physically could not come mm -hmm. out of my mouth and that's like to me if you know you have it that would be your like deciding factor of if you have it or not. Like if you were in danger, like if you were about to die or someone else you knew was about to get hurt, like, would you say something? And if your answer is no, you probably should talk to somebody about it and, and figure that out. Um, but that was definitely the thing for me. I was like, I don't think that's normal. Um, so, you know, we kind of directly put that towards my PTSD growing up and it's been good knowing that and being able to like let my friends know that like hey if I'm not like talking or like I'm zoning out a lot like snap me back to reality <laughs> you know like or just be there for me when when I come back and just be a good support because honestly it's super scary going through stuff where you like disassociate or lose consciousness and you wake up alone and scared so I even have in my bio the last line like if I pass out and you don't know me just like if you want to maybe stick around, I'd appreciate it because <laughs> I've woken up to some weird stuff before and it was like, I don't even know why people have the audacity to have, like do those kind of things. It's really inappropriate, I guess. It's like so many people drink in this game that you think that, oh, they just drink and pass out. It's like, you know, like draw a dick on their forehead with a Sharpie or, you know, like something like mm -hmm. that. Um, to them, it's innocent. Well, like, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. And that like, it sucks for both people when you find out that that's, what that was and you're like dude now i feel like shit like mm. so it's it's one of those things that i would just like to raise awareness so people like kind of just know oh maybe this person's not doing so great right now and maybe they'd be scared and kind of confused if they woke up with a dick on their forehead like <laughs> on sharpie you know so um i would definitely yeah i just want to 
work on like making my friends and their friends kind of aware of like how to help people with that. Mm. So were there any groups in within VR chat that helped, helped, helped you with your series of conditions that helped you become more accustomed to VR chat and online VR life? So I actually did like start a group on VR chat for disability pride and advocacy that has like a very short guide as to like what people can do if they don't want to like join my discord or ask me for help directly. But I true I do try and offer help to people that make avatar uh, assets or world creation for like doing photo sensitive sensitivity stuff for their club because mm -hmm. um, it doesn't affect just like um people with epilepsy, people with photophobia as well, like people with autism or PTSD or like really bad anxiety that get overwhelmed if like there's a lot of flashing lights or the environment just suddenly changes. Um, you know, just kind of like being mindful of what they can do to help their friends instead of like telling them they can't join, like making it to where they can. Because I've had a lot of like people give me feedback like, oh, it's going to take away from everybody else's experience or oh like you know that's a lot of work and i don't know how to do that or like oh that sounds like it would cost money and i don't have time for that and it's like i want to make it free i want to make it easy and i want to make anybody feel like they can come to me for help because i feel like i'm a really good advocate for stuff like that because i have so many different types of uh health problems under the same like very complex Complicated umbrella I'm in. Um, I have a lot of friends that relate to me on some different level with health problems, and I want to make it to where like a lot of different people from VR Chad don't just have to like keep everybody's avatars off. I literally only have four people in this room shown right now because like I just don't know, you know. And even sometimes my friends forget and they'll like wear like a meme shader avatar, and like I have to like throw my headset off and stuff and like manually restart my game just to get away from it. Um, but I am lucky, you know, like that I don't have seizures or anything. And I do want to help people that do have seizures be able to have a more safe experience. Um, unfortunately, VR chat can't like do that yet. They said they're working on making something more universal. But unfortunately, a lot of the shaders have to do with the content creators themselves. Um, you know, like the world assets and different avatar assets and stuff. And even like to the point where... Um, like the the toggle showcases for some avatars like they're usually always flashy to like grab people's attention like oh what was that you know like but it it a lot of people don't even put trigger warnings like they're not even aware they have to or they should or like you know what it means and i just want to help like clear confusion and help like spread the awareness that that would be a good thing to do mm -hmm. you know make it more easily readily let it readily known <laughs> mm. i remember during eac there was a lot of talk about some of the mods that help people with issues such as the ones you've mentioned when eac came into play a lot of people brought up th those facts of people with specific conditions or for example we, we heard about one dude who was blind who ended up using have a, had a mod that allowed them to have objects in the vr chat world read to him so he can maneuver through the world so what was it like at that time period for a lot of those people Honestly, there were a lot of good mods back in the day. And um, funny enough, I do have a developer friend that I was talking to. He works with a lot of like different Udon stuff for VR chat. And he was explaining to me that um, OSC, which is like the way that they communicate uh, third party applications to the VR chat API, um, is, has always been a thing. It's just that people that were making mods um, kind of originally did it maliciously, right? And then people are like, oh, we can modify the game. Let's start making like accessibility stuff. And the people that have made those assets and that continue to play VR chat are completely able to, like, if they really want to, they can make another script for it to work in OSC. It's a lot of work to, like, try and convert your project into something completely different. But, I mean, if you have the knowledge and you know what you did before and you have the will to do it, like, you actually want to do it, it mm -hmm. definitely can still help people that, you know, use the OSC plugins and stuff that are, um, you know, VR chat approved and... You know, like all the files are safe for you to use and stuff. And that that was kind of their goal from the beginning because there were a lot of things back in the day. Like even now, people are finding ways to work around being able to crash other people. You know, um, mm -hmm. I've also had epileptic friends tell me that they had to remove out of their bios that they had epilepsy because there were people that would wear like epilepsy trigger avatars and like trigger their seizures on purpose because they thought it was funny to watch them wiggle on the ground. Like, 
it's mm-hmm. it's one of those things where VR chess is kind of like working on trying to make it as safe as possible for people so they can include more people, which is like a great project. But just having the resources to do so is um, it's pretty limiting at the moment. So they're trying to figure out how to like make that work. But I'm really hopeful that they are able to make a good place for everybody. And um, hopefully some of the creators that make OSC add ons can help try and like put some band-aids on a few, uh, you know, like holes in the in the boat <laughs> for now, mm. you know. Hmm. I was unaware that a lot of people or are, are within at least oh, within Unity means into VR chat were trying to include some of those mods for back of the day into modern day. Do you know of any examples of some of those that people can reach out to? Hello, I'm gonna quickly interrupt your video. Please come follow us on any of our socials. We have a card down that way in the description, metaverse DJ card.co. You can find us on Discord, you can find us on Twitter, which X, whatever. Right here in this space, you'll see the at you can find me, Lion. And as well, we have a Patreon, which we've started a whole other show as a thank you for those who've signed up, such as Training Fangs, Forbidden Zero, and Niche. So thank you all for watching the video. I know how these games are going. I'll leave you to the rest of it. Enjoy. So I do actually have um, one asset that a very very kind creator gave to me. Um, They make a lot of world shaders. Their name is Mochi. They have a blind shader that they've used on this avatar called uh, Blindy. Blindy and Blondie were the two avatars that came out. Um, Blindy has a blind cane, which um, has a shader on it to where everything around you turns black. But when you put your hands on somebody or like around their body or like on the walls, the floor, whatever. Um, It's by proximity of like these vision spheres, right? And um, they also put one on the end of the cane to kind of be funny and be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna touch the floor with my cane and stuff. Um, Be able to see the floor in front of them too, which is a really cool project. They gave me that shader for free to work on, um, you know, just kind of having like a a good option for now. And I really commend them for that. They're an amazing person um, and they make some really good shaders. So Um, I know there's other good ones like TTS Wizard is a really good like speech to text, text to speech, speech to speech program, like, you know, like the whole integrations for like your heart rate monitor on your OSC status and all these different things. Um, Really good creator as well. Um, There are a lot of other good projects out there that I'm probably going to put on my profile at some point. Mm. Um, But, you know, there's I I love the support and the amount of awareness that's starting to become around uh, for VR chat. Hmm. So I'm gonna gear this into a different direction as well. What what were some of your first steps into VR chat like when you first came in right after you were doing uh switched into here? Um honestly, yeah, I I was just really into the drinking scene. I was young and you know, like my friends drank from from uh like Arma and Dead by Daylight and stuff. So I was like, yeah, you know, like come in and I used to deal a lot of card games and drinking nights and you know, that that kind of went into, like, drinking clubs, and then drinking clubs went into, like, DJ events where people drink, and then, the, you know, there's, like, um, I figured out, you know, people that drink go to dance events, too, and then so I started doing dance stuff, and then I saw the whole, like, other side of VR chat where people are, like, playing pianos and guitars and singing and doing open stuff stage stuff and you know thank god for audience anarchy that's so much fun with like friends plus instances and stuff and um you know like different open mic nights and stuff and all this different like creativity it just really it brought me back to my childhood which i don't really remember a lot of but like the good memories were for you know performing arts which is why i was super excited to get Mm. back into that again Mm. um it's just been kind of this whole (laughs) journey Mm. What was some of your first experience with VR chat seeing performing arts within VR chat and what kind of lasting impression did they have on you? Man, probably um probably DJing. I think DJing was my first like real I mean I'd seen dancers before but mm. um, um even that was like really cool i was like wow i don't really understand how that works yet but that's like pretty awesome right that people can capture their whole body in a video game um but like djing was like 
I was like, how do you even convert the audio and like, how do you get it to go through the world and all this kind of stuff? And then I really like, I had that background in like music theory and production and stuff. And, you know, I was, I was watching these DJs mixing and I was like, Ooh, you gotta have like really good music theory to do this, especially in VR chat. Like it's, it's difficult to be able to stream that kind of stuff. And then, you know, like good projects like VR CDN came around and like the lag was a lot better and, you know, they're like the quality is a lot higher and it was more optimized for VR chat. And it was like, you know, pro tv came out and then everything started looking really good and <laughs> you know like all these different you know uh people that come together and just create stuff and that's i honestly feel like that's what vr chats for is just creativity mm. um just trying to expand our horizons and see what we can we can accomplish i guess mm. okay so what was one of your first experiences performing arts in vr chat Um, didn't you just ask that? <laughs> well, I was asking <laughs> what were some stuff? experiences, like what were some of the places you've been? What was Oh, specifically? Yes. Oh, okay, specifically. Um, I remember starting off, like I said, from drinking nights going into like the, the DJ drinking events. And one of the first clubs I worked with was, um, probably the nation drunks and stoners, um, really good people over there. Love them. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still in their servers and I don't, I don't go around too often, but I still talk from a lot of people that are like originally from there and stuff. And they're really close people to me and, um, just kind of, I don't know, it, that stemmed in the whole DJ side of things. Cause they would have DJs come and play in every once in a while too. So that was probably like my first experience. And then it got into like, you know, being staff at clubs or co-owning or, you know, even managing DJs at that point, um, it was a lot of fun. Hmm. running huge events i just i just like uh curating and and uh promoting events it's a lot of fun hmm. so what is it like managing djs and club events within the vr chat scene i don't really do it too much more hmm. often um and I, honestly like manager is not a very good word for it it's, it's more hmm. like a promoter hmm. uh which is i was promoting clubs and i was promoting djs like i was kind of like doing a middleman kind of thing um, so I wouldn't quite say I was like reaching out to people and being like, Hey, I got this DJ and he plays all these genres and here's a sample and like, he should play for your club. It's, that's not what I was doing. It was more so like, yo, I've got this DJ that like wants to play, um, you know, a certain genre. And I was just kind of like a, a homie hooking up some homies, you know, like it was more what it was about. I was just ha was having fun making the lineups like super amazing and, you know, having people work together. That was a lot of fun. Hmm. So how, how did you personally end up getting into that kind of position to promote and push DJs in the club scene? Um, I think it came from one of the clubs I was originally part of for um, the DJ scene. I was admin there and then I became co-owner um, when the owner had to step away for a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I was, I kind of took on a lot of responsibility and I was like, the, you know, I was all doing all these different things like posters and making lineups and learning um, all these different types of D EDM genres. And then I really started nerding out about it and it kind of became like one of my new autistic special, special interests. Um, I know a lot about it now in a very short amount of time. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun. So, you know, it's, kind of just went from there um you know i was co-owning and then running like big events like collab events and then i was like wow collabs are fun like getting other communities to work with each other and then you know getting other djs to work with each other even if they play different genres trying to like make it to where the lineup kind of just like flows a little bit and i was mm. experimenting with all that kind of stuff and it was a lot of fun to do so mm. okay so what about that specifically attracted you to it may i ask I don't know what you're trying to ask. Oh. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, burr. It's okay. What about the whole promotion and the DJ club scene att attracted you to that kind of position to want to push DJs and club events and things of that nature? Oh, was there yeah. like a defining moment? Um, well, what about I mean, not specifically. Moment? Sorry. Oh, okay. Fair enough. 
It is a very common. Uh, there, there wasn't really any like yeah specific thing that pulled me into doing it. I just kind of you know it kind of snapped because I I had like the music theory and production background with uh, learning in high school and middle school and stuff, and it was just a lot of fun because I like music and I like making stuff happen, and it was like a pretty big scene to me when I first started. So I was like, all my friends are doing it. I want to make it happen. You know, like I want to put them all together <laughs> and hear what it sounds like because it's just a lot of fun. Hmm. It's a very understandable. Quite honestly, when I first came into Fairchild, I had no idea this thing was that big. So this last year or so is why I'm asking questions like that of amongst everyone we've talked to. I've never knew those things personally. When I came in 2023 is the first time I ever saw any of this. So so I do apologize for putting you on the spot for asking some questions like that. I was just kind of curious as what attracted people to that kind of thing. So hmm. Uh, yeah, you're good. I mean, a lot of people just kind of uh, translate their, you know, real life or, you know, like non-virtual life, I guess, um, skills in for like, you know, virtual kind of parallels, which I mean, for me, the parallel was from the music history into, um, you know, like doing DJ stuff. And I really liked EDM, but I never really took an interest into learning about it until VR chat. Um, so I already knew like some stuff, but not not a lot. Like I thought everything was just called dubstep. Um, <laughs> like I was real dumb going into it. Um, I just knew that it was it was uh, you know like electronic music, and I liked it. I don't really have like a genre I don't like other than um, noise. I, I I can't really do noise, unfortunately. It doesn't really sound like music to me. Uh, mm. But that's just like my personal. You know, I like everything else. So okay. So was there anything about the VR chat scene that uh, taught you about that specific kind of all the musics we have here and what surprised you about learning those kinds of things from the scene. I originally worked with a club that like specifically only did a certain genre yeah. and I kind of liked other genres and wanted to host them. And, you know, they were kind of, um, since the owner had to step away for a bit, they were kind of struggling with like people attending and stuff. And I was like, why not just kind of like open it up a little bit to other genres for um, a short time. And then, you know, like once we get the people again, come into the events and, you know, uh, we can kind of focus more back onto it, but it would be a good way to like get people to know that, you know, we started back up again. Um, so it kind of just came from there and just learning all these different you know just bits and pieces of each genre just picking up on conversations with djs and then once i kind of actually figured out there was a lot to learn i started doing my own research and um then i started telling them stuff they didn't even know sometimes so you know depending on how long they've been a dj and how far they delved into other genres um but you know like it's it's just like camaraderie over differences and um being similar but different is a lot of fun to me i don't know because <laughs> mm. we can teach each other new things but also relate mm. so you you did mention earlier you have a huge history in tap and as well as the club scene was there any crossover between the two of those worlds for what you've learned doing tap dance into what you've did and with this club scene um yeah for me uh when I was like kind of in that drinking scene, I went to the DJ scene, but then I also went to the dancing scene at the same time, kind of split my time. I would like go to dance events, you know, like earlier in the day. And then afterwards I go to club events <laughs> for DJ stuff. Um, and so then I just kind of took a break from the DJ scene because I wasn't like too well versed in it yet. Mm. Um, and like kind of focused on dance for a bit because I hyper focus on something <laughs> like VR chat's the only game I play right now. That's my hyper focus. Um, but like I just kind of hyper focused on the dance part and was like, oh wow, this is really cool, and you know. And then I found out that it wasn't just lap dancing. Like people were starting to venture out into like I heard ballet or even my homie Jupes. He does like Healy's dancing, which is really cool. Um, you know, on TikTok, he's a sensation over there, and he's actually oop, kind of the one that inspired me to uh to do this. He's like. You should Healy's dance with me. He's always trying to like ask his friends to do like TikToks and Healy's stuff with them. And, and I was like, man, like I don't have the play space for that. Like I have maybe a queen sized bedroom right now. <laughs> like I'm not able to do that. And he's like, well, then what can you do? You said you danced before, right? And I was like, yeah, but it's just like I, I need a bigger place to do this. And 
then I just kind of really started being bummed that I couldn't do it. And then I was like, well, what if I like completely clear out this closet I got next to me and like put my desk and my computer and everything into the closet. And then so when I close the closet, I have nothing in my room and I can just like it can just be a dance space. And so like I've started that process now and I'm really looking forward into like making a cool build with like a, a mirrored closet and stuff. And then like a curtain in front of it where I can put like a green screen for the curtain. That way it doesn't like reflect when I'm playing VR and like I have this really cool setup planned and I'm looking forward to like posting pictures about that like on socials as well and trying to like be like hey guys look at this cool thing <laughs> hmm. you know okay so within the uh, VR chat dance scene what were some of the specific experiences your first experiences with the VR chat club uh, dance scene um there were there were a few clubs that I mained back in the day, and um, I want to say probably one of my favorite clubs uh, so far has been Asylum um, by Harley. She's been interviewed by you guys before. You guys are good friends with her and, and White, and you know, like we we really like talking, and we've been talking for like almost two years now about doing like a collab between the club I used to co-own and the one that she owns, and you know, like kind of make DJ events uh, with dance events and kind of like merge the two. There's already a few communities that do that but like just kind of having our own slice of the pie helping each other out you know me mm -hmm. not necessarily running the dance side but her not necessarily running the dj side maybe kind of doing like a hybrid of both and you know one of us mm -hmm. focuses more on the other mm -hmm. um would be like kind of a cool kind of thing to get going and you know i had the whole like vision for the acting and and you know singing and stuff and i'm pretty sure she'd be into that too we've talked about it a few times so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens okay so from there, how did you end up meeting Harley and those that gave you those first experiences in terms of the, the dance and VR chat? Uh, yes, like many people, I don't remember most of the time where I've met someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for me, it's not drinking. It's more the just the memory issues. But um, I probably met her at some club event, probably either a DJ or a dance one because she kind of goes to both. Um, just ran a little, you know, surprise pop-up DJ event for her for her birthday, you know, like a few weeks ago. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but really looking forward into like mingling the, the two scenes together along with like, you know, uh, Avatar and world creation people too. Because um, I honestly mm -hmm. feel like the dance scene has a lot more Avatar creators in it than uh, DJ. And it's probably just because like dancing in Avatars has a lot to do with your Avatar, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I feel like it's a little more saturated and, and world creators are kind of more like, you know, DJ scene people and, you know, everybody just kind of leans a certain way and it's really beautiful. And then there's like, you know, people that are exceptions to the rules and make worlds, you know, in the dance scene, like Soph from 24, amazing world maker, um, you know, like all these different people that just kind of like do the opposite. And it's like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> like they're one of a kind and, you know, they're, they're pioneering just like I'm trying to do. So, mm understandable so at this point i'm going to end up cutting this here but i will turn it over to whoever has any yeah. questions as well one of the things we we're contemplating doing originally was as near the end of the show we allow anyone who has any questions to ask them if they chose if not we will wrap things up and call it a close if we're, before that where can anyone find you if they wish to find you who's got a goddamn question <laughs> yeah. chop, chop. oh who's got a question? <laughs> yeah my God, if you talk to me like that, I'm okay. not have a question. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Calm down. It's okay. Mom will give oh. you a cookie waiter. She will love you to death. Okay. You don't have oh. a question. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Oh, God. You have a question. Go ahead. Fire oh. well. I don't have a gun to fire. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, my name is Temable. I have one question. What strives you to give you your motivation? What strategy do I use to give me motivation? No, no like what, like, what, what strat, like what gives you the motivation? What does give me the motivation? Hmm. What's the fire underneath your ass? Okay, dad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my motivation. Only wrapped up. <laughs> I guess just to like be be as happy as I can be you know like for me it's always been just like how can I make things easier or like less complicated or you know more fun 
And I've, I've found that, like I said earlier, I think to, to be, or being around people that are your chosen family, people that really are just like there for you, like ride or die kind of, you know, like that's, that's the most important thing to me is just having best friends for the rest of your life, whether it be, you know, like you marry your best friend or you have like a group of friends that would, you know, literally walk in front of a bus for you or something or flip off a Karen at Walmart that stands in front of your cart you know something like that you don't have the courage to do but they're just like i got you hey hey carrot <laughs> you know like <laughs> and i'm like oh god no or like you know the order is wrong and they're like excuse me uh he ordered the uh minestrone soup you you brought the nochi oh soup god. i just you know i <laughs> i need those kind of people in my <laughs> life that's like the best because i would do that same thing for my friends you know so it's just like reciprocation and, and uh Having a lot of good yourself, content creator friends, friends, friends like inspire me. Damn, no video. Yeah, exactly. Because the way she mm. said it sounds like you. I like to make everything <laughs> about soup. Yeah. So did you say that there's a, wow, such so. a thing as Nanachi soup? Is that a thing? Because like no Nanachis, I think would make great soup. <laughs> yeah, they they put nochi in soup. Nachi. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> did, did you say nanachi like like that? Yeah, yeah, or like, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. They look tasty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Oh my God, anybody else got a question? I'm not on the menu. I guess I'll um, oh, Urban no. Dictionary that later. I don't know. I okay. <laughs> There's one right yeah. there. Uh, Cool. Grew up no, as one. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. So one of the, uh, as a fellow musician, I always get the uh, chance to work with other musicians. Uh, I always like to ask, you know, what is your, you know, like obviously you had the inspiration, what lights a fire under you, but what was the first musician that really struck a chord with, you know, what you love to do? Oh boy, <laughs> time to expose me a little bit. Um, Toby Keith and Reba McIntyre. I grew up country. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Toby I Keith and Reba McIntyre, and uh, um, I loved Justin Timberlake and Clay Aiken oh, and uh, Backstreet Boys, He's Britney Spears. Yes. Um, as long as I got my suit and tie, you know. And then in high school, it was like Jason Mraz, Christina Perry, oh, you know, yes. all that kind of stuff. And yeah, no, for me, it was it was singing mostly actually because I've been singing my whole life too. Um, I sing for like uh, Disney's unofficial like kind of side choir for like events for Inside Disney, and that's a lot of fun for me. Um, I love doing that every year. Same with uh, singing for Fourth of July for the city and our like kind of kind of county choir. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. That's lucky. That's, That's where my music theory Anybody came else? from. Cool. <laughs> I did have a question. Yes. Anybody else? Nice. I... You guys not here? Mike. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's he's quiet. quiet but... You're very quiet. Oh, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm D Mike yes. needs a better mic. I'm kind of afraid of this question. <laughs> like, Come on. <laughs> that now that she's soup starting to look better now. Real good. Nobody <laughs> asked you. You should be able to hear me better now. <laughs> yes, you 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 yeah, sound like better. Yeah. All right, was cool, cool. Cool. So my name is Steve Mike, and actually, I have a simple. I was a little late, so I do apologize for being late. I was trying to figure out. I thought this was being live stream. My understanding, this was supposed to be a live stream. That's what was explained to me. So I was on the YouTube waiting for you guys to go live, and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's <laughs> my bad. I apologize. <laughs> to be Rob fair, Mike. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Mike. I was under the intention it was going to be live as well. So you're okay. I'm sorry for telling you that. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh my I didn't. I didn't say specifically recorded with a live studio audience that is my fault in the promotions so i'm sorry d mike for that bad bad <laughs> bad bad line <laughs> so what's your point okay. so what's your point so i'm sorry. gonna take some on that one too question. you're okay what got you to gaming in the first place like to get on vr chat you had to learn about it somehow what got you to vr chat oh man <laughs> okay um well, I I played a little bit of uh, Barbie CD-ROM PC games back in the day, um, and, and then it, you know it, it was the gateway drug to buying Sims Three when it came out, 
And then uh, that was the gateway drug into, wow, um, there's like people that do YouTube stuff for gaming. I should watch that. And finding like uh, scene anners and Mr. Technical Difficult, which I mean, full circle, it was really fun because I ended up becoming friends with both of those people. But like, it was it was really fun to like just run a Gary's Mod server. And that's kind of how I got into it. Um, I had a bit of like a Nintendo DS, a Wii, um, I eventually like, you know, grew up and it's just a phase, mom, like Xbox COD, I, I was that person, I apologize to everybody I ever called anything, uh, rude, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, that stemmed into me playing FPS games like Gary's Mod and, and, um, then getting into tournaments for like CSGO, Rainbow Six, and then like into Dead by Daylight, and then, uh, Arma 3 and VR Chat. And and I actually played Rust for a while too, but that was more for like fun, <laughs> playing Zergs and back in Legacy mm. Day where the rad bears would kill you. <laughs> First bite, oh. <laughs> it was savage. <laughs> but you know, it's a lot of fun. Just kind of slowly, uh, like I said, I fixate on one game at a time, so it was kind of, you know. Hmm. Right now it's VR chat. Anybody else have a question? Oh no. No, thank you. I'm okay. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm okay now. No all right. problem, I think Steven. Tamble's got another question. <laughs> I, I know good. I know good. Tamable, my bad. Too tamable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shoot away. Do you want to talk about pizza? Like, if it's pizza <laughs> talk, Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> end of discussion. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm the side of autism that likes sweet things on savory things. I get that, but I don't like so my cheese. So <laughs> I mean, it's it's you, you know everybody's like taste buds are different. On pizza? What's wrong with that? Uh, oh, actually, oh, wait, yes, on, because I had like a bit of a um, I had a bit of a reaction to pineapple one time on pizza. I guess the more ripe and juicier it is, the more it makes my tongue bleed for some reason. <laughs> but I still oh, like that's... eating it because it oh, tastes good. So... And that's that's autism, that's... folks. That's Pineapple's autism. Pineapple's a fruit that'll bite back. That's It's got an enzyme in it. Yeah, yeah. it's like me you having out. IBS Either and not being able to eat gluten or red meat or dairy and, and eating it anyways. <laughs> it's, it's a choice. <laughs> it's a choice, definitely. <laughs> Mm. Is the serotonin or the gut pain more important right now? <laughs> <laughs> more than most, it's the serotonin. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. You, you, That's why I cry every time I have like a cheeseburger, because the... it's literally cheese, red meat, and, and gluten. So. <laughs> mm. You'll probably like the strawberry oh. pineapple pizza that someone in the Discord posted. No. Ew. Okay. Yeah. No. Pineapp that's, that's pineapple is enough flavors. on pizza. My autism pizza. is two flavors. Strawberry does not belong on pizza whatsoever. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not on the side of the spectrum that likes strawberries. Lions. <laughs> yes. If you can eat pineapple, pizza. you can eat pineapple teriyaki, and you can eat everything like that. You can put pineapple on pizza. I got a question for you, Rocking. Facts, no when, yeah, what's up? I got Dad? a question for you. When you enjoy your pizza, which way do you eat it? The proper way or from the crust forward? We're gonna get into fucking being picky on how you Okay, your pizza crust is. forward <laughs> is weird. I'm sorry. You okay, either fold your you pizza, go. you either Who fold your hell? pizza like a taco or you eat it like a normal person. Who the okay. hell eats it from the crust to the point? What the absolute hell? The same people that the, the same middle. people that eat Oreos whole, <laughs> or oh put the toilet God. paper You're backwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Crust first. Like if you get stuffed crust, that's the reason you want to eat a crust. Never had a stuffed crust. With that said, 
I like opened him. up a You're can of worms. Stuff, crust that you did, Raptor. You made a yeah, lot of people mad. Yeah, you take a lot of hot takes here, Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Who does pizza No, keep it to Twitter, Raptor. Come on. I have a question. Yeah. Raptor, you okay. started a wool. Wait a minute. Is it related to the interview or is it about pizza? Yeah. All right. I was making a pun. I was just making a pun out of the pizza. I literally can't stand this much longer, so. Sushi um, do you pizza. have any like you guys disability VR chat tips mm -hmm. on your Discord at all? One hundred percent. Anybody can add me at any time on Discord or join my server. That's always in my card. Um, or my username joined. on Discord <laughs> should be Rocking Horse underscore. Mm -hmm. um, you can always add me for that as well. Um, I will. I mm -hmm. provide free help for anybody that wants to put disability uh, related things on their avatars or in their worlds at any time. Hmm. <laughs> oh. I'm sure I'll regret that at some point, but mm. <laughs> so far I have not. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, with that said, Reese, that, without forcing you to stand any longer, where can people find you if they wish to find you, Rocking Horse? What are some of the best places? Um, I usually always have my card, um, or I mean, if card gets depreciated at some point and we're all like, you know, 70 years old or whatever, um, I'll always have some kind of way for people to find me on some kind of like broad, you know, social platform like card, um, that, you know, you can link all your different socials and stuff. And usually I'll have something like that. Mm. So mm. you can always find me that way. And I don't think I'm going to ever change my name from rocking horse underscore unless like I get doxxed or something. So don't do that. <laughs> we don't we want me to be here <laughs> don't do that well rocking horse and everyone here thank you for joining us today on our second year anniversary i appreciate all of you and with that said raptor you know the thing okay folks no matter what and you can't see it for yourself there's a lot of people in here that no matter who you are what you do what what you want to do there's a lot of backing so when you get a chance, pat somebody on the shoulder on the way out, but just keep your hand off their ass because somebody's going to be pissed. Take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>